What's up guys, this is Charles with Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Today I'm gonna to show you how to install a Racetech coil spring conversion kit on your dirt bike equipped with air forks. Some of the benefits of having an air fork are they're lighter weight, and if you need to change that spring rate, it's really easy to do. So why would somebody wanna change their air fork to a coil spring? Well, air forks are high maintenance, so having to check your air pressures every time before you go ride can be a hassle, especially if you have triple air chamber forks. Now, the other thing that happens with these air forks is as you're out riding, the air pressure builds up, and that can really be noticeable if you're going up in elevation or if you have temperature increases. Now, another thing that happens with these air forks is if you blow a fork seal, depending what air fork it is, it can end your riding day. So if you decide to upgrade to one of the spring conversion kits, the benefits are you're gonna get that plush, consistent, reliable feel throughout your riding day from start to finish. Now, the other thing, and my favorite part, is you don't have to constantly be checking the air pressures. So if these are the benefits that you're after, the Racetech spring conversion system is something that's gonna be good for you. Now, as far as installation goes, any bike that has the air forks, this process will be similar, but you wanna check the instructions for your specific kit, and that way you have the specifics for your forks. Now, the bike we're using to do this is a 2018 KTM 450 SXF with the WP AER forks. So let's go ahead and jump into this. To do this job, you need the Racetech spring conversion system. So this is gonna come with this rod that goes straight down through your air fork. And then you're also gonna need a spring. So the springs are sold separate. You have three different options for the springs. You have a soft, medium, and a hard. This one's the medium spring. It's a 0.92. We're gonna use it for a 155 pound rider. He races the intermediate class for both motocross and off-road and you can use that as a reference for what spring you wanna get. Now, while you're in there, if you had a leaky fork seal, you're wanna, gonna wanna get that replaced and use some seal grease with that. And then on the other fork, we're actually gonna change out our suspension fluid. And if you were planning on installing the Racetech gold valves, now would be a good time to do that as well. But if you're only installing the spring conversion system, you're only gonna need one bottle of ultra slick fork fluid on that. And then we're also using suspension clean and some rubber gloves. To do this job, we're gonna use a ratio right, some common hand tools, including a torque wrench. We have some fork cap wrenches. So this one fits the stock WP AER forks. And then this other one fits our Racetech conversion kit. We'll have a link in the description below for both of these wrenches. And then we're gonna use digital calipers, fork seal drivers if you're doing the seals at the same time, and the seal bullet. And then we, you'll also wanna have some rags and safety glasses. We're also gonna use a vise and some soft jaws with that. Our soft jaws are made specifically for suspension, and we're also going to need a drain pan. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there's several different styles of air forks out there, but for these AER forks, our Spring is only in this left fork. This is our air spring. So we're only gonna remove this. And even though we're changing the fluid in this right side fork tube, we're not gonna show that process. You can watch one of our dual chamber fork videos and that'll show you how to bleed all of that up. So to get to this, all we're gonna do is remove our brake caliper and then the front wheel You can loosen these top triple clamps and also if you need to loosen the fork cap at this point, you can remove your handlebar clamp, loosen the fork cap. Once you've done that, if you don't have the suspension vise, then you can loosen up these lower triple clamps and remove the fork. Now that we have our fork on the table, we're gonna clean it up before we take it apart. So I'm using suspension cleaner on a rag. We'll just wipe down any dirt. That way it doesn't contaminate the internal parts of this fork. Next, I'm gonna remove the rubber cap on the bottom of the fork. Once that's removed, we're gonna clean around the center bolt in the bottom. So I'm just gonna spray that into my drain pan. 
With everything cleaned up, we're going to install this fork tube into our suspension vise. And we're going to release the air pressures from these chambers. So the one with this cap, that's going to be our high pressure. And then this one on the left, it's just going to be this outer chamber and it's just going to be atmospheric air pressure, but we're still going to vent it before we remove that cap. If you didn't already loosen your fork cap while it was in the bike, you'll do it now while it's in the vise. What we can do now is remove the fork from the vise and we're going to dump all the oil out just like on any standard fork oil or fork seal replacement. The more oil you can get out, the better. Once you've drained all that oil out, we're gonna clamp the axle holder into our soft jaws. So we're just gonna clamp on these flat surfaces. Just be careful not to damage any parts on the fork. Once it's in there, we have a 19 millimeter center bolt on this bottom or a 19 millimeter head center bolt. So we'll go ahead and loosen that up and remove it. Once that center bolt's out, we're gonna remove this whole cartridge assembly and we'll prep the other cartridge and get everything ready to go back together. Now that that cartridge is out of the way, we can remove our fork tubes from the vise. We'll lay these down. Next, we're gonna take this cartridge assembly and we're gonna clamp this nut in our soft jaws. We're gonna break this loose. This is gonna be a 24 millimeter wrench on this fork. So this one did come loose, but again, if it doesn't break loose like that, you might have to use a torch really quick on it. Make sure you don't have any oil or contact cleaner on it when you do that. And then we will be reusing this piece as well as this nut. And to get this nut back, what I'm gonna do is lightly clamp this rod and just make sure we don't damage it. That way, if we decide we wanna run the air fork again at some future point, we can. And then we'll remove this damper from the vise. Will we prep our new cartridge? I'm gonna let these forks drain and try to get the rest of that oil out of here. All right, before we go back together with anything, what I'm gonna do is spray off these bolts and nuts. So once we have these old parts cleaned up, what we're gonna do is take this nut and before we set this nut into place, what we're gonna do is make sure this plastic spacer is on this cartridge. So if it is, you can screw this nut on all the way, you know, bottom it out on the end of these threads. Once you've done that, we're gonna install this into the vise. So we need to remove these fork tubes. So I'm just gonna set this upside down and clamp that nut in the vise. And then we can take this lower adapter. We're gonna screw this on by hand until you fill up bottom out on the end of this rod. And when you do that, you wanna make sure there's a little gap in between this piece and your nut. When this blue piece bottoms out, you're gonna feel it turning this rod. And if you try to hold the rod, it's gonna turn the whole thing. So what you'll do now is back the jam nut against this adapter piece. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is raise that nut up in the vise just a little bit. And then we're just gonna turn this whole rod assembly so the nut backs up onto this. And then we'll use a wrench and tighten this down to the jam nut. And this doesn't have to be crazy tight, you just need to snug it down. Next thing, I'm gonna take our fork tube assemblies and I'm gonna wipe the bottom of this axle holder out where that center bolt goes. We just wanna keep everything as clean as possible. Now once this fork tube is cleaned up, what we're gonna do is take this washer, we're gonna install this 
into the bottom of this fork tube. And what this does, since the stock fork didn't come with a spring, it's just gonna protect your fork tube from being damaged by that spring. And it needs to lay flat in there. So what we're gonna do, we'll drop it down in, we'll look down, make sure it's laying flat. If it's not, you can reach up through the bottom and help it to lay flat in there. Now that the washer is flush, we're gonna take our spring and set it down into the fork tubes. After that, we can install this axle holder back into our vise. And I'm gonna take this cartridge and back these adjuster nuts up. These are our preload adjusters. So what we're gonna do is slide this down into place. Now, with this, this hex piece at the bottom, it needs to line up with the axle holder in the bottom. There's actually a slot that's made for this. So that's the first thing we're gonna pay attention to is lining that up. And again, you can reach up through the bottom to help it line up. And once it is, you have this collar towards the top that goes against the spring, then this plastic tube, and then the preload adjusters. So before we make any adjustments here, we need to install the center bolt in the bottom. Now keep in mind when you install this center bolt, you wanna put a little bit of fork oil or a little bit of seal grease on that O-ring right there. And then we're gonna to torque this to 33.2 foot-pounds. Once the center bolt is torqued, we need to figure out our spring preload. So what we're gonna do is measure from the edge of this fork tube when it's sitting all the way down on its dust seal on this axle holder. And then we'll measure from this point to the top side of this collar for the fork spring. So this is with no preload at all right now. And we're at 61.41. We want four millimeters of preload. The range is three to five millimeters, but four millimeters, that's gonna be that happy middle. So to adjust that, first I'm just gonna turn this first nut only. So right there, we're 57.45, so that's pretty dang close to four millimeters. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten down our jam nut. These are just two 32 millimeter nuts. These don't have to be crazy tight. We just need to snug them down. Again, you don't wanna to get too crazy with those. You don't wanna break them. Once the jam nuts are tightened down, we're ready to fill this fork with oil. The range on this is 500 to 575 milliliters. And the reason for that extra volume is because we've eliminated some of the mass that was in this. So what we're gonna do is put ours at 525 milliliters for our rider. So we'll remove our fork from the vise. We'll slide this outer tube down just a little bit and tip it to the side. And we can pour our oil in. One thing that's nice about this kit is there's no bleeding. So all we need to do is put some oil on this O-ring and then we'll tighten down this cap. Now keep in mind that this Racetech cap is different than the cap that your fork came with. So you're gonna have to use a different fork cap wrench. So check the link in the description below for this wrench, but we're gonna go ahead and tighten it down. Next step, we need to reinstall this rubber cap into the bottom of the fork. And now you can install your new coil spring fork back onto your bike. Now when you reinstall your forks, you wanna make sure everything's lined up, especially that axle at the bottom. And we have a great how-to video that shows you how to do that. And that's gonna help keep your forks from binding when you're out riding.
That's all there is to installing the Racetech spring conversion system on your dirt bike with air forks. This kit is really pretty simple to install and if you need it, it's available on our website. We offer free shipping on orders over $75. And if you need more helpful content like this, subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.